So when we talk about a daily routine for health and wellness, mind, body, and spirit, figuring out the right time of day to do it is really important. Now, you can think about other people you know that may do this type of thing, and there are a lot of them, but you can't do it when they do it just because they do it then. You have to do it when it works for you because consistency is the key. And if you're not going to do it every day, that's not good. You have to pick a time that works for you. You can do other things that people are doing and copy those or do those because you see that they work or you like to do them too, or they've worked for you in the past. That's great. But in terms of picking a time, that's really a crucial threshold thing. And you can't just do a time that works for someone else. It has to work for you, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the middle of the day, whether it's in the afternoon or evening. Now, you can also do it different times, different days. As long as you do it every day, it doesn't really matter. For me, I like to do it first thing in the morning. It doesn't work for me to do it. I, I definitely can't do it in the middle of the day. And at nighttime, I just really want to kick back. So it's a great way for me to start my day. I like being up really early because it's really quiet in my house. I get up at 5 a.m. So that's really a great time. Even on the weekends, I get up at 5 a.m. Now, I may not jump into my routine because I don't have to run to work or, or something like that. But I like being up in the morning. I like doing it at that time because it's quiet, it's very peaceful, my brain is very sharp in the morning before I start my day, and it's just, I like to see the change of day from darkness to light and all of that. My soul, it, it's very, very inspiring and motivating. So I like being up uh, early in the morning. Uh, that may not work for you, so you don't do it at that time. Uh, sometimes it's good to like for me to, I read a book or I do something like that. I, I get thinking about a lot of things. I make lists. Sometimes I write content, whatever it may be. And that's on the weekends. During the week, I'm going to explain shortly what I do. But for you, pick a time that works for you, that way you can be consistent and just do it every single day. My routine starts like this. This is every day during the week. I wake up at 5 a.m. I don't use an alarm clock. I wake up somewhere around 4.45, 4.50, whatever it is, just naturally at this point because I've been meditating for so long since I'm 25 years old. That's 28 years, so I'm 53 right now. I get up at 5 a.m., I go to the bathroom, and I take a very cold shower. Sometimes it's a, it's a warm or hot shower, but I would say 95 percent of the time, it's a cold shower. This is different than taking a cold plunge outside in a barrel or in a pool or something like that. Different effects. That's more intense. Taking a cold shower, it's a different experience. But for me, 30 seconds a minute, it's very refreshing. It gets me up. I know I'm not going to fall back to sleep. I towel off after the shower, drink a cold glass of water, sometimes with lemon and some pink sea salt, but you know, keep the very minimal salt. Lemon and water is really great. Again, just very refreshing. After my meditation, I go for a walk. So I go right into bed. I put my headphones in. I turn on my iPhone and I listen to a mantra and I do a meditation called One Minute Breath. One Minute Breath is exactly what it sounds like. I take one breath a minute for 31 minutes. I inhale for 20 seconds, I hold it for 20 seconds, and I exhale for 20 seconds. That's one minute breath. Profound benefits from doing a meditation like this, and I've been doing this for a little over 3,000 days, every day consistent. After I do the meditation, I go right down to the floor and I hold plank. Now, I've held plank over the last 3,000 days, up to 11 minutes at some time. But I'm not strong enough to hold plank for 11 minutes. My mind is strong enough to hold plank for 11 minutes, so I've been able to do it. But through the years, I've caused some tendonitis in my elbows from holding plank for so long that there are times where I only do it for four or five minutes or two minutes, never less than two minutes. Uh, but, you know, four or five minutes, I, I could bang out very easily uh, so long as my elbows are feeling okay. If they're not, I go on my back. And this is a little funny, but I do an inverted plank because, again, it's the intent for what we're doing which we're doing a practice that we're committing to ourselves to do every day for health and wellness, mind, body, and spirit. And by doing it every day, we get benefits from doing that because we're showing up. And I've learned a long time, if you keep up, you'll be kept up. And that's a big mantra of mine and in my family. Uh, we talk about that all the time. So that's a very serious thing for us for commitment. And I rely on that all the time. So being inverted, obviously much easier than holding plank. But again, it's the commitment of showing up, telling yourself you're going to do it, do it every day. 
and holding plank for me after my meditation is key. After I do the plank, I then go on a five mile walk, whether I go on a treadmill, which I have in my office, or, or I go outside, so long as it's not, you know, 17 degrees out and freezing, prefer to be outside because it's just really nice. Um, and, and where I live, I, I, I can walk right from my house to this bridge on the North Trail and back. It's a little over 10,000 steps. It's, it, it's five miles. It's a perfect walk. It takes me about an hour and 15 minutes. It's perfect. Otherwise, I'm on the treadmill in my office where in January right now, right after the new year, and uh, I've been going on the treadmill just because it's cold out there and I want to save time. And I just go right on the treadmill. I walk for the five miles, whether I'm listening to a book, a podcast, whatever it may be. It's all like philosophy, thinking about wellness, thinking about life, affirmations. All positive thought, not self-help, there's nothing wrong with self-help, but like very positive forward thinking, gratitude, all of that. Those are the things I like to listen to, read, marketing, philosophy mixed in with that, technology as well. That's the type of stuff that I listen to. It just gets me going in the morning so that after I'm done with all of this, I can just really jump into my day and be inspired and be ready to take on whatever it is that that day has in store for me. But it's the sequence of those events from waking up, the shower, the meditation, the plank, the walk. And for me, it's my schedule. After I do the walk, I drive my uh, daughter to school who's a sophomore. I drive her to school. I come home. I feed the dogs. Then I really jump into a hot tub outside every day. I take a hot tub in the morning every day. And then, which is really key for me, and this is part of my overall routine, is the hot tub is a key thing in my life because not only do I do it to wind down for my whole morning routine, but at nighttime, my wife and I go into the hot tub. That's where we have some of our best talks so on a personal basis. For me, that's important for me and my wife, our marriage, our relationship, which are both busy running in different directions all day. So for us, after the day is winding down, to go into the hot tub around 10, 10, 15 every single night and just go in there. We're in there for about 15 minutes, half hour. That's where we really, really talk and just catch up on things. It's funny, though, because when I was commuting to the city the first uh, 15 years that I lived up here in Chappaqua, uh, which is about 45 minutes from Manhattan, we would commute every day. And I had a different morning routine, but our, my routine with her was we would go through our calendars on the train on the way into the city. Again, because busy lives, our kids were younger, we were running around a lot much more than we are now. And for us to spend that 45 minutes, 50 minutes going through our calendars and just catching up was really important. Now it's sort of transitioned into the hot tub conversation. Obviously, we talk more other times throughout the day and weekends and whatever. But in terms of like special time and part of my routine and something that I rely on and count on, which is really important for us to do that in the hot tub at nighttime. I know she really enjoys it. I That's where I talk the most with her about like real things, things that I have to talk about, whatever it may be. We do that every night. So that's really my routine. It's broken up by the day to go in the hot tub at night and then the morning activities, which I said. But those type of things really help inspire and motivate me to be who I am daily throughout the day and then reconnecting with my wife at night, which is really important, and then going to sleep. I have a great day. No matter what goes on that day, those things are really the most important thing. Everything else is just blocking and tackling for what we have to do every day for our families to live a prosperous life and to be happy and to be healthy. Take me up on this to have a daily routine. Happy to talk to anyone about this at any time. I just think it's really, really important uh, and I wish you well.